All right, and your name is? Mike Beavis, general manager of Syracuse Stampede. And uh, heck of a game last night. You were down by quite a bit and came back and went in overtime. Yeah, last night was a nice game for our guys. We, didn't, we don't have a lot of high points this year. This was one of them for sure. Um, you know, we, they worked hard, came out slow, but uh, battled back and, and worked hard. Now, Lockport's been in the, in the league one year and they seem to be pretty successful. When you go to the Lockport games and you see all the people that show up there, it's got to feel good as uh, as a general manager and owner that there are people coming out to see your product. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it, it's nice to see that the uh, the local guys are drawing the crowd, and uh, it's always a, a fun atmosphere. Uh, the crowds are great there, and uh, young team. They work really hard, and uh, they had a lot of success this year. What did you think of the showcase in Lockport? Showcase was awesome. It was one of the best showcases I've been to. Um, everything was set up perfect. Uh, it was great. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, it's good to see you. You too. We had, uh, I got to go on the road trip this past weekend to Syracuse and see the two games out there. It was cold. Yes, it was. It was Freeze really break. cold. And uh, hopefully, uh, there's good news. They're going to do some uh, improvements to the rink, I hear. Hopefully, they yeah. put some heat in there. Yeah, former NHL Rory Fitzpatrick, uh, from what I understand, is uh, one of the uh, uh, owners that's going to take over the rink. So, supposedly, they're putting some money into it. So, hopefully, they put some heat in there. That'd be nice. Yeah. Well, you had two games this past weekend uh, Saturday night and Sunday morning. Saturday night's game start off pretty well for the Express. They yeah. built up a 3 nothing lead and then penalty trouble in the second period. You're shorthanded almost the entire period. Right, yeah. Uh, we got in penalty trouble and um, you know beyond that um, just weren't mentally focused enough. You know, making line changes at the wrong time. Uh, not knowing the situation of the game where we're making a line change with nine seconds to go in a period. Same time we make the line change, we got a defenseman that pinches and the neutral zone gets beat for a two on one. Um, just um, really just not mentally focused enough to come out with a win. On the plus side of that second period, you did come away with two shorthanded goals, which yes. was fun to see. Yes, uh, Moranti is a machine. You can play him in any situation, and he's just a good, smart hockey player. He did pick up a point in that game because it went to overtime. Right. And for the whole weekend, you got three out of four points. You can't be too unhappy with that. No, I was very unhappy with Saturday's game, but overall, um, anytime you go on the road, if you can pick up three out of four points, it's a good weekend. But I uh, was not pleased with Saturday night's game at all. And then Sunday morning's game was a whole different story. I yeah. said just off camera that of the times that I've seen you guys, I've seen every game that's been played here, and then you've played two games at NU against Syracuse. It was probably the most complete game that I've seen you guys play. You're just on fire from the the drop of the puck to the buzzer at the end. Yeah, well, it's so uh, we've talked about it all year. It's no secret with our team. When we use our team speed, we're tough to play against. And Sunday, we had that going for three full periods. And uh, I think we gave them some real problems with our speed. So yeah, kind of uh, two opposite games. We were really focused and dialed in on Sunday, not so much on Saturday. You know, luckily, we came out with a point on Saturday, uh, you know, in spite of that. On Sunday during the game, I did notice that number 10 for Syracuse was trying to start something, and you guys stayed pretty disciplined and didn't let them drag them to the box. Yeah, well, we were uh, uh, not happy with the penalties we took in the second period on Saturday night, so that was a big focus going into Sunday. Um, and frankly, uh, Frank took an undisciplined misconduct penalty on Sunday morning and uh, didn't play much the rest of the game. So. We just we can't have it, especially heading into the playoffs. You can't play shorthanded. You did change up the lines, it seemed, for these two games. He had Durkee up with Moranti and Frank, yep. and he played really well, I thought, Saturday night. Yeah. Um, Durkee is um, he's kind of a deceiving player. He's not the fastest guy. But um, I thought he played well uh, all weekend, really. We had him killing some penalties, which is a little different for him. Um, you know, going to the playoffs, you never know if you get injuries. Uh, so we need to get some guys some uh, experience in some different roles. And I thought Durkin did a really good job. And then I noticed on Sunday, the, the second line now with Syracuse, um, Gaz, and Golba, they were playing really well on Sunday. Yeah, they really clicked. Um, I thought that line was our best line on Sunday, uh, although the other two lines played well. Um, that line really clicked. They moved the puck well. Um, you got some size, you got some grip, you got some speed on that line. So. You know, we're going to keep them together for a little bit. Uh, I know uh, 
Frank Moranti and Cuse were probably the top line in the league for quite a while. And uh, frankly, I think um, you know a few of them got complacent and uh, kind of rusting on their early season success. And Moranti was the most consistent all year on that line. So we thought uh, you know we we're gonna break them up a little bit and see how they do. And it seemed like Cuse fit in pretty well with the other guys. Now I had the privilege of standing behind the bench on Sunday morning. And I got to see the game from a whole new perspective. From the stands, the team looks really fast. From the bench, it's even faster still. I don't know how you keep control of everything that's going on, but you did a fantabulous job. I thought it was just an amazing experience. Yeah, it's, it's definitely different being behind the bench. Um, you know, you, you do it for a long time, you kind of get better at it, or you don't get to do it for long. So um, I've been doing it a long time. Uh, Dave Kasparik's on the bench, obviously, and he does a really good job. But, um, you know, as the guys get older, you, know, you, you kind of call out the lines that are up next, especially when you have 10 forwards like we did on Sunday. So you call out the lines that are up next, and they do a really good job of, of making sure who's taking who coming off the ice so they know who's got which wing. And so, uh, you know, when you got good, smart players, it helps. So. And speaking of good, smart players, while I was standing there, after they came off from their shifts, they were talking about other players and how they were playing on the ice from the, the opposition. And it's good to hear that they talk to each other about how to play. And I think that actually went to your success on, on Sunday morning. Yeah, well, we, you know, Saturday night, like I said, we weren't very mentally engaged in the game. And that was a real sticking point for us heading into Sunday. So it was good to see that they were noticing things, knowing situations, knowing uh, maybe a guy on the other team that maybe um, has trouble pivoting to one side or the other and they maybe can exploit with some speed. Or uh, a guy that's a left-handed shot, right-handed shot, uh, knowing what they can pick on a little bit when they get on the ice. So again, the games were kind of polar opposites as far as being engaged mentally. We have a big three-game series coming up this weekend with Jersey Shore. 35 and one or 36 and one? 37. 37 and one. That one it's got to stick in their crawl a little bit. You guys deliver it to them. Right. Hopefully you can deliver a couple more this weekend. Well, we hope so. Um, obviously, they're 37 and 1 for a reason. I mean, they're a really good team. They're deep. Um, they've got four lines. They've got good goaltending. Um, you know, they run like an NHL club. They're on the ice twice a day, so they're extremely well conditioned. So uh, on the flip side, we, we feel like we can play with them any day. So, you know, we're going to go out there. We'll give it our best this weekend. And hopefully we can come out of there with some wins. And hopefully we can fill the stands this weekend, have a big presence here for the Jersey Shore games, and we've yeah. been trying to help with that. Yep, you guys have. You've been great all year. And, uh, yeah, we, you know, a lot of people are talking about it, so we're expecting pretty good crowds again. So it should be a lot of fun. All right, so thank you very much, and thank you again for allowing me to embed myself with the team for the weekend on their road trip. Anytime. It was fun. Thanks. All right, thank you. All right, so the coach changed some lines around, and you moved to a different line. And Saturday, you were probably one of the best players on the ice skating around. And Sunday, we had a good game. What's it mean for you to get that line change and show a little more ice time? Uh, it feels good because I just get like more of an opportunity to play and uh, like show off what I actually can do. And just like the more ice time, like I could just like you feel more like into the game and like ready to go. And what did you think of Saturday's game? Took off with a 3 nothing lead and then I don't know what happened at the end, but it didn't turn out the way we liked. Uh, yeah, I think it was uh, just a little bit like we looked a little tired at the end because we didn't have a lot of guys. So we just couldn't finish like the game, which is always disappointing. 
he had the players stacked in the penalty box there in the second period, three in the Express penalty box and two in the Syracuse. I don't think I've seen that at this level in this season for that many people in the penalty box. Was it just? Uh, I think it was just like, just the emotions of the game, like at certain points, like it like just builds like real high. But All right, one last question for you. Number 10 on Syracuse is that, uh, I can't remember his name now, but he came out of Canada, and he was looked like he was headhunting on uh, on Sunday. And you guys, the coach told you not to retaliate. Did you think it frustrated him more? It seems like that was his job was trying to rile you guys up. And Sunday, the discipline was there where nothing happened. Mm -hmm. Like, well, I mean, obviously I know because like I have like done something like that. But like you, like just no retaliation just like makes you more mad. Like because like no one's doing like what you're trying to do like in tr what like you're trying to establish like just try to get people mad and if we're not retaliating then it's just like pointless for him to be doing that all right cool thank you very much you guys are the captains of the team the leaders how do you think this season has gone so far your first season here in lockport it's truly amazing, um, especially uh, our fans. Fans are great. Um, the atmosphere here is just awesome to play in. Um, every time we step on the ice, uh, hearing the fans uh, cheer and stuff, it just gives you a big rush. Um, honestly, uh, coming to Lockport is probably one of the best decisions I've had to play some junior A hockey. And uh, so far, the team that we played have been great. I mean, some of them are dirty, but it's all right. We, we learn to overcome it and move forward. You're a pretty successful team in your first year. I hope to carry over into the playoffs. What do you think the playoff atmosphere is going to be like here in Lockport? Uh, hopefully, it's uh, it's better than it has been this uh, regular season. You know, it's been it's been truly amazing this regular season. So I'm hoping that uh, I'm, not, I'm expecting that it's going to be uh, off the charts throughout playoffs. Now I ask about the ice. Everyone talks about, they, they love the building. How is the ice itself? Do you get got good speed? Is it slow or, you know, how the pucks bounce? Um, it's pretty fast ice. They use non-marking pucks, which is kind of, I mean, personally, I'm not, I don't care for them uh, that much. They bounce quite a bit. Um, it's frustrating too. Uh, I mean, I know our team just left. We're really frustrated in practicing and stuff when pucks aren't bouncing away, bouncing over sticks and stuff like that. But it's just something else that we need to overcome uh, this season. and. We've done a good job with it. Uh, Nick, as the as the captain of the team, what would you like to say to the rest of your team when we're going into the playoffs? What do you want to see your team do? Uh, I just want to see 100% effort. We have to push harder than we did in the regular season. These past couple of weeks, we haven't been uh, we kind of been giving up a little bit because we already locked out our position, but. We just need to pick it back up and go into playoffs in the high note, and hopefully just keep running through it. Gibby, you have anything to say? Uh, yeah, just keep the full effort throughout the game, all 60 minutes, never let up. Uh, we've had our difficulties keeping a full effort throughout the game, so just one small thing we need to work on should be good.